What's up, YTPC? Did somebody say hump day? Had to do it. Uncle Willie coming to you from the mobile lounge on this wonderful Wednesday. <clears throat> We're gonna, I'm gonna call it Warped Wednesday. You can call it what you want. Cause that's the way things are. Right, wrong, or indifferent, you got your own opinion. So anyway, I'm gonna start off and tell you about this uh, warped tobacco I'm smoking. Right after I tell you what I'm smoking it in. It's a beautiful, the sleeves are right there where it bugs you, right at your elbow. It's a beautiful Savinelli. This line is the spring line. I saw that, thought that it was only fitting to smoke the spring line in the spring. Since it's just spring is just sprung upon us last week. So we're still in the early stages. So here we go, shape 127. It's got some bird's eye on it, some nice green. It's just a beautiful pipe. Typical Savinelli, smokes great. Six millimeter filter, but I chose to put the reducer in here. And uh, I'm hearing voices. I'll go from there. I want to try out the, uh, this I think this is only the second bowl I've smoked out of this pipe. using my rat rays. Matte black and silver. No onboard tools. I prefer no onboard tools. Yeah, these cups, the freaking lids don't fit that well as you, as you can see there. It almost looks like the way I was holding it, it looked like Statue of Liberty. My dumbass neighbor. I hope we ain't gonna listen to that all fucking summer. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway. I am smoking the Red Hunt by Warped. The Warped Tobacco is a collaboration of uh, Kyle Gellis from Warped Cigars and Jeremy Reeves from C&D Tobacco, Cornell and Deal. This is one of their offerings that does not have cigar leaf in it. This stuff is probably close to two years old because I put it in a jar and then just left it. I haven't touched it. But the reason I'm smoking it today is when I smoked the Beast the other day, someone commented on the video and we started chatting and he said that the Beast reminded him of the Red Hunt. That's the tin art from the Red Hunt. I guess that's a, a Red Hunter with an animal carcass hanging. So I, I told him I would revisit the Red Hunt and give him my thoughts. He said, I'd, I'd like to know what you think. So I'm going to let you know what I think. When I, I'm kind of not used to smoking the uh, Cornell and Deal stuff. I forgot how much it shrinks when you smoke it. Their tobaccos aren't as dense as uh, Galwath and Hogarth, but nonetheless, 
the red hunt. It was a good offering from uh, Kyle Gellis and, and Jeremy Reeves. So Virginia Perique with Orientals. It has red slash mahogany Virginias. And then it has Bosma and Izmir Orientals. And then fermented, aged fermented Perique. Now, remembering just from the other day, <clears throat> remembering what I took from the aroma of the beast <clears throat> when I opened this jar it reminds me nothing of the beast sorry bud but you're maybe you were talking about in the smoke I'll get to that in a minute but the, the tin note from either one yeah see I can smell that with once I look took the lid off still that's just sour and uh, yeah the red hunt is sweet smelling i mean it's very pleasant it's got a boozy aroma it doesn't say what it's topped with but i know it's got a, a booze in it of some sort it's too bright and flavorful aroma to be a rum in my opinion rum is more of a downplayed I don't know what this would be. Maybe a bourbon type booze. I mean, it's got a sweet oaky smell. I love the smell of this. Now back to the beast. And I come up with the word I was looking for the other day for this cut. Coarse cut. It's a coarse ground cut because it's half ribbon. And then it's like the ribbons are cut into little little pieces like i say it looks like they sliced it this way and then diced it that way so that's how you get the the coarse cut in it but after a couple days of it being open and taking on some air and then now i haven't opened it until just now it doesn't smell as sour it's still the perfect moisture level to smoke I might smoke a bowl of this after this red hunt. Still, it's a really pleasant tobacco. I enjoyed the beast. I um, have to admit. I'm going to show you what the uh, what the red hunt looks like. It's a broken flake, typical of Cornell and Deal. They call it a flake, but it's a broken flake. Where it was a flake at one time before they destroyed it and put it into the jar. But. Idiot. But. Upon opening this jar this morning. Or afternoon really. It's three o'clock. After opening this jar just a little while ago to to pack this bowl having smoking this recently and remembering the jar note of briarworks back down south this and this even though they're two different colors, sorta. This one's got more bright Virginias in it. This is all red and dark. You can see a little difference there. This smells so much like this. This 
this is a, a vapor. It's a Virginia Perique. There's no Oriental. At least it calls out for no Orientals like this has. And it's got that same boozy aroma to it. And I smoked this the other day and it started to bite me a little bit. So I'm wondering if having I'm wondering I don't know how I want to ask this or say this but this doesn't taste like the back down south but they both smell almost identical to my nose everybody sniffer sniffs different so it's really hard to say what you might get out of it the school bus is letting the kids out and somebody is walking by i wanted to make sure that it was a familiar face i don't like I don't like uh, traffic and unseen faces, unfamiliar faces. When the when the bus stops right here, these are uh, elementary school kids. They're all they're my neighbors. I don't know them, but they're still my neighbor. And if anything was to happen, I'd be the first one out of this damn jeep and confront somebody because I, I know who lives up and down the street here and if I saw somebody out of place stopping for one of these kids I'm going straight over there hopefully I can make it in time and get straight over there and ask the kid if they know whoever that person is I'm my worst fear is a, is a kid getting abducted and if it happened right here, man, I want to be right in the middle of it and help prevent it if possible. But yeah, I saw somebody at the last minute peek out of my, my blind side and I wanted to make sure it was a familiar face because the bus just was letting them out. So sorry about that. But anyway, and these little cute cups ain't worth a damn. I think I told you that. So the Red Hunt, to me, brother, is not reminiscent of the Beast. And, and, I mean, no, not in the aroma of either tin. I don't know how... How soon lately... How does that sound? I don't know how recently you have smoked the Red Hunt to compare it to the Beast. There you go. I don't know how recently you were able to compare the two. But like I said, everybody sniffers sniffs different. And your taste buds taste different than what I taste. And maybe it was reminiscent to each other for you. But it, it just was It isn't for me. Like I say, the Red Hunt is more reminiscent in aroma to the Back Down South. Was that Back Down South? That was the first tobacco I, I've had that had that aroma. And man, it, I just love it. And then when the Red Hunt came along and I smelt that, shit, that boozy smell on it is almost, it's almost like something you could eat or drink. But... That's my take on the beast compared to the Red Hunt. But. My uh, thought on the Red Hunt now. Let's just get back to focusing on one tobacco.
I think the Orientals shine more in this for me. The Virginias being the red mahogany Virginia, they have the red Virginias to me has that uh, baked bread pastry type thing. And somebody hit the nail on the head last week. I was listening to somebody's review and they, cause I've, I've mentioned how this tastes like a, uh, an unflavored, not this, but the, what I'm getting at, the flavor profile as a, uh, unflavored pastry, you know, not an apple turnover or not a, somebody came up and said something about a natural donut. And I, that's hit the nail right on the head. A glazed donut without the glaze. So just a plain donut is what the Red Virginias remind me of. Just a plain pastry, unflavored, unsweetened. So if you were to make a donut and then just eat it like that, it's just like a, a that's what the Red Virginia, and I love that. The Red Virginias give me that. If I take a Virginia and it's got that citrus lemongrass uh, and it's gonna bite me. I can tell right off the bat it's gonna bite me. And with the, uh, back down south, it's got some red Virginias in it from what it looks like. And uh, by the way, this is from 21, August of 21. And the red hunt, I think I got before the, I don't, I don't remember. They are both from 21 easily, I do know that. <clears throat> but the red hunt I have another jar or tin in my cellar I got the four blends I, I think Warped has I forget if it's six or eight offerings I think it's eight offerings I don't have I don't have Sarto And I know, and so the bed, that's a, uh, an esoterical blend. I think there's something else. And the ones I don't have have uh, Latakia in it, Latakia. Because I know Sarto has Latakia, and I don't remember what the other. But I've got the other four, Cloudhopper, Red Hunt. Uh, of course, I can't think of them now. Cloudhopper, Red Hunt espresso uh, oh, we three kings um, scarecrow and then there's a couple others but I got the, all the vapor blends or four of them when they the first four they came out with I have a ten of each in my cellar plus a jar of each that's been in for two years now I could look on the jaw on my the bottom of my tin and whatever date that is I would just add a couple months to what this is and that would tell me about how old because I had this the first four I had the these and then when I smoked them and evaluated my thoughts and and I ordered a tin of each again thinking I was going to smoke through them then of course I found something else and then I found something else and I just never got back to revisiting. And I've been riding the GNH and the Sammy G train for almost a year now. So these, these blends are like in between every so often, but I've been smoking exclusively as y'all know, Galworth blends. So I'm gonna jump off and then finish up the rest of this. I'm enjoying this pretty damn good. I forgot how good it was, like I say, when you don't visit something forever. So remember, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And with that being said, until next time, you know what to do. Stuff them and puff them.